You know what's cool sometimes? A nice vignette. It helps you focus the eye of the viewer and kind of relight the scene after the fact. But what do you do if your camera setup gets you vignetting and dark edges when you don't want it? Nathan here and today we're talking all about vignettes and how to get rid of unwanted dark edges in your frame. Now this came up while coloring a music video and I noticed that on the super wide shot there was some darkness around the edges. So I hit up the DP and said, hey, what were you using on this shot? And they were using a wide angle lens and a Tiffin variable ND filter. Just so happens I have the exact same ND filter. So I did some tests and it turns out when you crank this thing up to max on a wide angle lens, you get some vignetting on your image and it's kind of inconsistent. And that's a problem. So in today's video, we're gonna go over how to fix that in Resolve. And also, if you're new here, I put out two Resolve tutorials a week every Monday and Thursday. But anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16 and I'm gonna use a couple different methods. But for the first method, it can be done in the free version of Resolve. So we have our shot here and there's some vignetting going on, but you can't quite see it. So let's add some contrast and saturation to the image. I'm just gonna do that quickly in my curves, bring it down, bring it up on the higher end, maybe bring my gamma down, a scotch, and then just pump my gain up. Okay, that looks great. I'm then just gonna bring my saturation up and yeah, park it around there. That to me looks good. Now we can play through a shot. And if you watch at the beginning here, you don't really notice anything. You can tell that it's darker around the edges, but it's not entirely obvious that's happening via the lens. There could be something within the scene causing that darkness, but as we, the camera starts to move and the darkness follows it, it becomes painfully apparent that that is caused within the lens, and that's a problem. So here's how I'm gonna go about fixing this. I'm gonna apply a new node with Alt S, and we're gonna go in, we're gonna zoom out a little bit here, and we're gonna go into our power window. I'm then going to grab my pen tool and I can kind of see where the affected areas are. It seems to be really dark up in this top corner and darker around here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our pen tool. We're gonna draw kind of a shape like this, just a funky looking box over top of it. And boom, we're now gonna go into our highlight mode. And as you can see, we're only selecting this area in the middle. That's not what we want. We wanna select the dark areas. So we're gonna invert our mask. So now we can go out of highlight and we can make adjustments. And we can start by bumping up our gamma a bit. Yeah, that's starting to look pretty good, but you may notice it's totally obvious that we've made the adjustment. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna crank up our softness. And now it blends much more seamlessly and we can see the before and the after. So we're definitely making an impact and you can definitely do some tweaking to get it to kind of your desired effectiveness. But I think that's looking not too bad. We can bring up the softness a little bit more and let's just see what area we're impacting. Yeah, so it's definitely getting softer. And then again, you can see the before and the after. Okay, so now we're gonna play through the clip just to see how it looks in motion. Okay, it looks not too bad, but I'm still noticing a little bit of darkness up in this top right corner. You can select and deselect that, and it's getting better, but it's not 100%. So we're off to a great start, but there's a couple more tricks that we can employ to make things just that little bit better. So we're gonna add a new node with Alt S, and this next technique does require the studio version of Resolve. We're then gonna go in, and we're going to key our nice blue sky here. So we'll just grab that, go into our highlight, and let's see if we can get a nice key. I'm gonna widen up my hue just to grab more colors. It's starting to get pretty good. Get my lower saturation areas, maybe. Okay, so as we check through our clip, we can see that's looking pretty good. We're getting a little bit of funkiness going on with these trees here. So we're just going to denoise it a bit and then clean up our black. Maybe bring down that denoise a bit. And yeah, that's looking much better. Okay, great, but now we have selected the water as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our power window, grab our pen tool, and we're just gonna click on the edge here, and we're just gonna basically skim this water surface a little bit. Don't be afraid to dip into it there. Yeah, we can bring that down just a scooch. And now we just wanna bring our softness up. Okay, great. 
Now we're gonna come out of our highlight mode. So what we wanna do is we wanna get this color more uniform throughout. Now, a way I'm gonna do that is through using the color compressor tool. So I'm gonna go in, drag that on top, and now we wanna select our target color. So we can use our screen picker and we can just grab a color on there. We can also, we can also select a color in here and make some adjustments. Maybe if we want to increase the saturation a bit or make it a bit brighter, we definitely have the ability to do that. So now we'll start compressing the color. We're going to compress our hue a little bit and we can compress our saturation, but that's more of a color thing than anything else. And if you wanna learn more about fixing up skies, check out my tutorial up here. So anyway, the real secret sauce for this technique relies in the compressed luminance. So as we crank this up, this is a little extreme, but you can see everything is essentially the same color in the area that we've selected. Now we're gonna crank that down a little bit because I think that's a little excessive. But now as we go through our image, you barely notice any darkness up in the corners and we can see the before and the after. So we're making a huge difference for sure and it may not have even been apparent before just how much vignetting we were getting but once we fix it up, you can see a massive difference. So I'm just gonna disable both of the techniques so you can kind of see from the beginning, this is what we started out with and this is where we're at now. So that's a massive improvement for sure. And I definitely think the brighter parts of your image will be impacted more, but we are also getting vignetting on the lower parts of our image. Now I want the two effects to be applied at the same time. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna add a new node and I'm gonna add a parallel node. And what that does is it does this and this both at the same time and they output into this node here. So what we can do is we can go in and grab our key and I'm just gonna go into my highlight to see how good of a key I'm getting. Starts off pretty good. I'm gonna increase our width a little bit. We're still not getting this dark part over here, so we can see there is definitely a darker part to this side of the screen that's being caused by that vignetting. So we're going to down our darkness a little bit and just get all these little shadows from the footprints in the sand. Now you can see that we are definitely catching part of this cliff here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go back into my highlight, grab a power window, make a little whoop, little box around this, and invert it. And then because this element moves, we're actually gonna track this. We're gonna go into our tracker and we're gonna select forward till the end. Perfect, it doesn't move. We're then gonna select backwards and let it track through. It's gonna do its tracking magic as the camera is panning and boom, easy peasy. We now have a track to that area as I go through the clip. So we can just go back to our key, tidy things up a little bit with a bit of denoise. Crank that up a scooch and bring up our clean black. Great. Now we're gonna go out of our highlight and we can also make exposure adjustments if we wanted to. Let's say we want that sand to be nice and bright, bring down the gamma a little bit. Yeah, maybe increase some contrast in that sand. That looks good. But just like with the sky, we're gonna get a real boost with our color compressor. So now we're gonna bring that on and I'm just gonna select the target color somewhere here. Great, we're then gonna compress our hue. We can compress our saturation a bit to make it more uniform in that color. And then the real kicker comes in with the luminance. So you can see as I increase this, we're getting that vignetting to kind of go away. And as we scrub through the clip, you're definitely seeing more uniformity in the sand, but you're also seeing it in the waveform. As we bring down that compressed luminance, you can see the difference that it's making on the waveform here. And as we bring it up, it's getting everything a little bit closer. Now you could crank it all the way to 100, but then it looks horrible and you have no shadows at all. So, so maybe if you wanna go for a really abstract look, but it doesn't really look like reality. So we're gonna bring that down and wherever it works for you, where you feel like you've kind of fixed the problem. So anyway, folks, I hope that helps you out when adjusting unwanted vignettes and getting rid of them. Anyway, if you like this video, be sure to hit that button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. And well, if you didn't like the video, then the dislike button is there too. Anyway, folks, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.